Greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journeys, our discussions, our discoveries, and our explorations with respect to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2024. And that brings us to a title which has been designated by Criterion at spy number 1226. And this is a work which is described as being from the year 2023. And the name of the filmmaker is Vim Venders. And the name of the work is Perfect Days. This is the work which is described as being from the year 2023, and the name of the filmmaker is Vim Benders. This is directed by Vim Benders and written by Vim Benders and Takuma Takasaki, and uh, produced by Koji Yanai. And among its really, uh, really spectacular cast, uh, we have uh, people like Tokyo Emoto, and Arisa Nakano, and Aoi Yamada, Yumi Aso, Sayuri Ishikawa, Tomokazu Miura, Min Tanaka, and also we have starring in the main role, uh, the character's name is Hirayama. Hirayama is portrayed by the one, the only, the great Koji Yakusho. In this work, which is right here in front of me, Perfect Days. This is the Vim Vendors film Perfect Days, uh, courtesy of the Criterion release, uh, which occurred earlier this year in 2024. Now, I'm coming a little bit late to uh, my discussion of this film uh, in terms of this YouTube video, and I apologize for that. And also, I apologize for uh, my background and setting. I'm still trying to, to uh, rearrange and uh, reorder things in terms of my uh, shelf stuff, and uh, I, I tend to be a bit... Uh, slow with that sort of stuff, so I apologize. I'm still trying to uh, arrange things so it looks uh, somewhat more presentable, but I hope you can forgive me. But uh, before I I settle down with the uh, uh, interior decor matters, I first wanted to be sure that I had the opportunity before it was too late to uh, at least speak about some thoughts and, and reactions I had. Uh, to this really remarkable achievement, uh, which is Perfect Days, uh, courtesy of this Criterion release, the Vim Vendors film. So I suppose I could start with a very basic uh, plot or story structure discussion, and if I were to do that, uh, I'll try to do it in a way to not touch upon specific details, again, for the benefit of those who have not yet seen this great film. I don't want to ruin any of the surprises or the delights of this film uh, that await you, uh, for those who have yet to see it, uh, because there are so many lovely delights uh, that are in store for you uh, for first-time watchers of this film. And also, indeed, I would suggest for people who might be revisiting this film as well, there are so many delights and surprises and, and uplifts and uh, 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 really sincere uh, human emotional moments that I think resonate really, really resonate uh, in a way that is uh, quite profound and uh, quite daring and quiet and uh, in a very uh, passionate way and yet also in a very contemplative way uh, that I think makes this film and the reach of this film so universal and so, I think, wide in scope. So I'll try to be as uh, very basic as possible in terms of my uh, discussion of the story or plot structure of this film. And so I suppose we could talk about, this is uh, modern day Japan, uh, an urban setting of Japan, specifically Tokyo, and specifically an area of, of uh, metropolitan Tokyo, which is uh, referred to as, or which is called Shibuya or Shibuya Ward, which is a, a sort of a, a very... Uh, a very popular and, uh, relatively speaking, quite uh, population and building dense 
a part of Tokyo. I mean, most of the areas of Tokyo are quite population and building dense, but uh, this uh, place in particular uh, is so. But that also means that there are many architectural structures as well as many people that frequent this area. And I think those components are very key and critical when considering the makeup and the uh, at the trajectory of this film, Perfect Days, because we have Hirayama, the main character, the Koji Yakusho character, who is among the population, among the populace, among the people who uh, live, breathe, and work uh, in this particular area. And what his work entails is uh, having a daily routine of going to public restroom facilities, public toilet facilities uh, in this specific part of uh, metropolitan uh, Tokyo and cleaning them. He is the, uh, the he is uh, one of the people assigned to make uh, uh, habitual rounds to the public restroom facilities uh, in the city to clean them. Uh, and we follow his routine from the time that he wakes up and his morning ritual routines of getting ready to go to work and then getting to work uh, performing his professional work duties at various locations that we also follow also we see him observing others so we observe Hirayama performing work but you also see and observe Hirayama uh, witnessing others and observing others and this Active observation and witnessing can take the form of many, or can take shape in many forms. So, for instance, he could either be uh, actively looking towards people or, or responding to people who are within his vicinity, you know, because according or uh, along the way in this film, we do get to meet some people, whether they be work associated, maybe people, colleagues that he is working with, and also by extension, uh, people in his in that immediate vicinity that has uh, certain repercussions in terms of uh, various plot threads that are established and then carried through uh, throughout the course of the film. Also, maybe there might be not just a professional uh, orbit, but also there might be a personal orbit uh, with regard to Hirayama and who he is and where he comes from and also what that entails in terms of who we may or may not meet along the way. And so uh, we have this kind of maybe close orbit close orbital interaction on a professional front and potentially on a private front. Uh, and we see how not only people react to him, but also how Hirayama reacts to these people. So this is one maybe way of uh, method of interaction or form of interaction that we see Hirayama engaged in. We also see Hirayama, the main character, the Koji Yakusho character, engaged in uh, what one might call uh, say, uh, observations of society or the world around him. And this can take the form of, say, people that he meets, maybe random chance encounters with quote-unquote strangers. Uh, but of course, I use that word rather lightly, and I see balloons flying across the screen here. I apologize. That's another automatic thing, I think, for uh, this, this uh, uh, Mac computer. But in any event, we have the uh, the the way in which he observes people around him, usually from a distance or maybe once or twice removed. Uh, there might be some distance of space and time. There's an interesting conceit, for example, involving uh, notes that he finds at a specific uh, restroom facility and how that uh, forms a kind of uh, written form of, of tag or tic-tac-toe or some kind of game that he plays with uh, in an anonymous fashion. Uh, but a connection is uh, developed, even though he might not necessarily know who is on the other side of that communication, at least uh, in the time being. So there is a, a, a form of distance that occurs in terms of his observations and connections, but the connections are still had. Uh, and this also rings true with, say, people that he observes from a distance, uh, maybe people in the park nearby that he observes that he might not necessarily talk to directly, but over time and over frequent, say, observations, not just one way but both ways, we find that uh, deep-rooted connections can be made, even in a quote-unquote uh, sterile or or urbanized uh, society as uh, Tokyo might be uh, depicted as being, uh, you know, modern day, present day Tokyo. Uh, there is still room for this type of uh, observing, uh, caring eye, 
that might lead to uh, deep-rooted connections, even if those connections are made from uh, over vast distances. Uh, and this type of connectivity also occurs uh, in the context of the film vis-a-vis -vis music and the choice of music. And Hirayama has a really uh, keen sense about uh, the music choices that he makes, the music that he listens to. And this is, I think, in in a interesting way, a kind of physical media lover's dream, in a sense, in terms of the way in which he is is so devoted to not just the musical choices that he has, but the way in which he uh, consumes music. And this uh, creates this wonderful conceit of the cassette tape and going to the used cassette stores or the vinyl record stores in in Tokyo. And if uh, if you haven't been to Tokyo. Uh, it's uh, you know I'm I'm very pleased to tell you that there are so many at least at the, the time of this video there are so many used record stores vinyl record stores cassette tape stores uh, the like. Uh, that uh, are in Tokyo, very similar to the types that you see uh, depicted in the film Perfect Days, and so uh, this is uh, lending itself to a formulation of uh, the way in which, say, Hirayama inhabits himself and also inhabits uh, and interacts with uh, the things and people and spaces around him, uh, particularly or, for example, via music not just in terms of the musical choices he makes, but also and also not just in terms of the emotional connections that he makes and the emotional reactions that he has to specific songs that we listen to in the film, but also the specific method of how he consumes it, uh, a la uh, cassette tape or physical media, which is absolutely a lovely detail. Um, and I, I should say, too, that there is also the sense of uh, interaction with uh, uh, not just people, but also places and space uh, the way in which he regards, say, um, this becomes a really important detail too, sunlight and rain through the trees, for instance, or through the branches of a, of a tree nearby, or, um, or things like uh, looking out onto a rainy morning as he's on his way to work, or maybe the ritual of going to a nearby vending machine near where he lives and getting his uh, morning drink uh, before he drives off to work. Or maybe it's him alone uh, in his room at night just before he goes to sleep and uh, very... Um, uh, very uh, intently and purposefully choosing a specific work or book to read uh, without much, uh, say, fanfare or calling attention to itself in a cinematic floor sort of way. But on the contrary, it's a very inward feeling, uh, intimate thing or intimate things that we see Hirayama engage with. But it's also done in a way that feels so uh, direct and so earnest and so very much part of who he is. That's a really remarkable thing about this film, Perfect Days, uh, uh, which is just how much one gets to know Hirayama, the, the person, uh, Hirayama, without necessarily being told who he is. I mean, this film is very much, you know, the, the, the uh, expression, show, not tell, uh, into in terms of the revelation of of ideas and feelings and uh, reasonings behind certain characters and I think this film Perfect Days is one of the best examples of the show not tell we are shown things but you aren't necessarily told specific things about who he is uh, the film does come close to those sorts of telling of uh, of what his background might be but I think it it goes to the edge just enough and then retreats just in, uh, enough so that we as viewers can uh, be left with maybe trying to figure out who he is and where he comes from. And we might have certain uh, notions and conceptions about who Hirayama is and what his background might be, uh, uh, because the less that is directly revealed, the more we become curious about who he is, because he becomes this fascinating character. Uh, but he becomes fascinating in his moments of contemplation, he becomes fascinating in his moments of, of thinking and caring. And also, he is such a fascinating character by virtue of how he is depicted. Because as I say, uh, we know him through his acts. We know him through what he does. We know him through his routine. We know him how, in terms of how he responds to the very detailed nature uh, and the very detail-oriented way in which he carries out his work, which is quite physical. Uh, he gets down uh, sometimes on all fours to try to get to a corner underneath 
a particular edge of the uh, of the, the the porcelain or plastic underpinnings of say uh, the public restroom facilities but he tries to get every nook and cranny uh, clean almost to perfection but it pro perhaps perfection isn't the right word but it's it's the idea of, of um, care and method and uh, caring to clean even those places that will go completely unnoticed or will most likely go completely unnoticed uh, to the casual, uh, to the casual viewer, to the casual, say, uh, frequenter of the public restroom. You know, but uh, that doesn't matter to him. Uh, but what matters is uh, what is being done, the actual act itself, rather than any kind of, say, recognition uh, or any kind of direct and immediate reward. The actual act itself seems to be, in terms of Hirayama's own say, makeup as a human being, the act itself seems to be uh, the reward uh, that he is uh, seeking. So uh, it is a really lovely portrait of a man, uh, a lovely portrait of a, of a kind of lifestyle and a way of, 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 um, a way of being that I must say isn't necessarily without its share of difficulties. Uh, we don't see Hirayama necessarily as a kind of, of uh, uh, ultimate 100% complacent person, per se, at least I would argue that's not how we necessarily see him. We do see him uh, in the way in which he might have to confront certain issues. There might be uh, interesting ways that a viewer could interpret or view Hirayama as maybe in some instances, perhaps being in denial about certain aspects of his life. Again, uh, we have to watch the film and we have to glean from the clues uh, of the film Perfect Days to try to uh, maybe piece together, work out what it is or what Hirayama's background is. And maybe depending on how we might um, uh, we might uh, come to our own conclusions, maybe we would uh, reach a various, say, a reading of Hirayama the character. Maybe we see him as being uh, very much accepting of his fate, or maybe there might be certain aspects that he might be in denial, or maybe he might uh, be unwilling or perhaps unable to come to grips with, say, certain aspects of his own past and his own background. But I mention those possibilities not as in any way a knock against the film. I don't even mention them as being a knock against Hirayama's character. Uh, but I think those possibilities make him more human in an interesting way. I mean, he is not an, he is not an everyday perfect super person. And I don't think the film is meant to depict him in that way. And I don't think it's uh, inviting us to read or to interpret Hirayama as the super person but rather he is a person and he is someone with a lot of caring and feeling and a lot of uh, dedication to uh, a particular goal or a particular set of, of, uh, of uh, sets, uh, skill sets or a particular set of things that he has in mind. And, and whether it be uh, something like trying to find a specific tape or maybe trying to uh, get to the next facility that it has to clean on his uh, daily routine, or maybe the the book, the choice of book that he decides to read just before going to bed, the placement of the lamp on the floor, uh, because he sleeps on the floor uh, before he goes to bed, or maybe the way in which his his shelves are are neatly arranged, much cleaner than my shelves, I should say, but. Uh, uh, and also the, the 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 even the look on his face when he opens the door in the morning to see what the weather's like, whether it's uh, gloomy, uh, cloudy skies and raining, or whether it is a sunny day, or maybe somewhere in between. His look on his face seems to be the same type of of outlook, which is uh, you know he takes things for what they are. Um, what might seem to be blemishes, what might seem to be uh, negative points, he'll still take them for what they are, which I think is a, a real powerful uh, aspect of his character. And thus makes him, I think, someone who is uh, far from naive. I don't think he's a naive character, but rather he is one who, who takes things and absorbs them and uh, not just accepts them, but also uh, maybe cares for them. Uh, and I think that is a very powerful trait, while also acknowledging uh, certain weaknesses that he has, certain moments of sadness that he might have, maybe certain moments of, of uh, maybe even despair that might be hinted at or might even be directly referenced. Uh, Hirayama is uh, all things. He encompasses uh, all these things.
and he remains very humble, uh, and yet he remains very almost anonymous. Uh, but he is still there. And it's a film like Perfect Days that uh, makes his mark known, but makes his mark known uh, in ways that, uh, uh, that uh, protect and preserve his quote-unquote anonymity on the one hand, but also um, uh, cherishes and celebrates it in a way that is uh, not at all inconsistent with who Hirayama is as a human being. So I, am, uh, I think that in a nutshell, is what I could probably say to describe what Perfect Days is. I would also like to add that um, uh, maybe on a personal note, you know, I don't claim to be in any way near. I'm not like Hirayama, the main character of this film. You know, far from it. You know, I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm nowhere near uh, the kind of uh, point of of uh, say. Uh, peace uh, that uh, the character I think feels in his life. I'm nowhere near that uh, point of say uh, uh, intellectual honesty and maturity uh, or emotional honesty and maturity. So I don't claim to be. Uh, there's something very beautiful about uh, the way that Hirayama is as a character and a human being that I could never uh, even hope to achieve and accomplish in my own life. So I don't claim to have any any. Uh, uh, I don't claim to have any claims to uh, to any uh, similarities between my life and Hirayama's, but what I what I can say is, um, I didn't watch this film when it was first released in theaters here in the U U.S. I caught up with it much much later. Many people had recommended to me that I watch this film, Perfect Days, back in 2023, but uh, I was not able to because of my own schedule, unfortunately. But I did manage to eventually catch up with it thanks to uh, the Criterion Collection release. And uh, the Criterion Collection release came earlier this year, the summer. Uh, and this was around the time that I was uh, back in Japan. I, I live in Los Angeles now, but I have to make uh, occasional trips, uh, very short trips back to Tokyo for work and other matters. So I, I go back to Tokyo maybe every, uh, every two, two or three times a year, something like that, uh, for a very short time, two weeks, maybe less, something like that. So I, I go back somewhat frequently. And uh, this past summer, I went back, and I was staying in Tokyo for a little bit, and uh, this was around. This was uh, coinciding around the time that I was uh, watching Perfect Days and, and uh, absorbing Perfect Days and really thinking about it. And it, it dawned on me that um, if someone were to ask me, "Hey, Daisuke." What is it about Japan that you love? Daisuke, what is it about Japan that you, or what is it about Tokyo that you love? You know, Daisuke, you've lived in Tokyo for a number of years. What is it about Tokyo that you love? And I suppose if someone asked me that question, I could try to talk and respond in my verbose, roundabout, blah, blah, blah sort of way. I love Tokyo because this, 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 or something like that. Um, I haven't lived in Tokyo all my life, but I've lived there for a number of significant years. And uh, I still love the, I love Tokyo very much. But, um, so if someone asked me that question, I could perhaps give this will drawn out answer that would just wait, way too long. Or, and I thought about this, I could do something else. I could do something uh, in the alternative, which is, so if someone were to ask me, hey, Daisuke, why do you love Tokyo so much? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, go watch Perfect Days. And by the time you finish watching Perfect Days and how you feel about how, the feelings that you have at the end of the Perfect Days, that's why I love Tokyo. And so that's how I'd probably answer the question is if someone were to ask me, Daisuke, why do you love Tokyo so much? Or how much do you love Tokyo so much? I'd say, uh, go and watch Perfect Days and then... Um, that feeling that you have at the end of watching Perfect Days, that's how much I love Tokyo. This film, I think, uh, really does so much in expressing why it is I love being there. Um, and again, I don't claim to be like Hirayama, but there's just something that he does, the, the smile that he has, the feelings, not just smiles, but the, the, the roller coaster of emotions that he's able to feel as he's listening to music as he's driving in the early morning hours in a fairly uh, empty Tokyo 
highway, for example. Incidentally, there's some shots of the Tokyo Highway, and I, I like um, uh, those are the same routes that I would go <laughs> um, uh, driving or or uh, 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 being uh, driven down certain uh, routes here. So I, I can recognize not all, but some of the, the the driving paths that are featured in the film, which is really cool. Uh, but uh, there's moments like he's he's listening to music as he's driving. Now I can. I can say that I listened when I was living in Tokyo. I would put my hear, uh, earphones in, and I'd listen to music, and it would be music that would be very much from the same period of uh, music that Hirayama listens to, um, uh, sort of uh, like rock, rock, jazz, prog rock a bit from the 70s, 60s, 70s, something like that. And uh, I would listen to it as I would be walking down, say, some Tokyo street, maybe with an umbrella in hand as it was drizzling slightly much, uh, not unlike some of the, the scenes of rain that we see in perfect days. And I'd maybe, just for a moment, maybe think back and just become emotional for whatever reason. But I wouldn't show it. No one around me would know exactly, would know anything that I'd be thinking about because I'd be surrounded by strangers in the Tokyo metropolitan area. It would just be me with my music and the umbrella in the rain. But something about that lyric that I just heard uh, in that brief split second maybe made me flash back to some memory that I had when I was six, seven, eight, something like that. And no one would know about it except me at that particular moment, and it would just be gone like that. So that feeling and just being in Tokyo of all places um, that feeling is uh, very very special to me and when I see moments in like that in this film perfect days I am it's I kind of crumble um, it becomes I become very vulnerable and it becomes very very moving to me and so uh, I mentioned this uh, too because again, this release, the Criterion release, came out earlier this year in the summer. Again, by the around the time that I was back in in Japan for a little bit for uh, two, uh, a few weeks, uh, and it really hit me just how much the film reminded me not just how much I I love Tokyo, but how much I miss being in Tokyo. Now, don't get me wrong, I still enjoy being here uh, for a number of reasons in the United States, but there's a, something very special about being in Tokyo that for reasons that I'm trying to articulate here, very poorly I admit, I apologize, but I'm trying to articulate for these reasons. Uh, the, watching the film Perfect Days not only reminds me just how much I love Tokyo and how much I miss Tokyo, but in an interesting way, it's almost like the, the best... Um, uh, representation of of one's love for Tokyo and how much one misses Tokyo. So um, uh, this film has very quickly become uh, an incredibly special film for me. And it's one of those things where it I have a personal connection with the film. I might not necessarily uh, cling directly to the specific... Uh, story beats of Hirayama's say, story per se, you know, because I don't associate or I, I don't have that same life experience that he seems to have in this film or he, that he might have in this film. There are some similarities, but not, not 100%. Uh, but that's not the reason why I still can really, uh, really profoundly cling to this film. But uh, uh, I can really profoundly cling to this film because it reminds me, it, re it enables me to recall uh, a, an emotional feeling that I have without without telling it, you know, show not tell, which I think is is the the great maybe metaphor, not metaphor, but maybe the great um, uh, conceit that I can use to describe the joy that I have uh, when thinking about this film, Perfect Days. I think this is a remarkable film. I really do. I think this is uh, such a special film. And um, uh, I, am, I am so grateful that I was able to watch this film. Uh, again, I think the timing was also very perfect. Uh, just that f feeling. And also, too, I, I felt even more emotion when I, when I left 
Japan over the summer and came back to America. It was great to be back. Don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy being here, but but um, there was an extra sting of sadness. And uh, you know, even when I was in the airport uh, in Tokyo, just before my flight, I went to the the public restroom, and when I was in the public restroom, something just some emotional beat just fell over me for a split second again. I was just, I was thinking to myself, this is so uncanny. This is like the film Perfect Days is, is giving me all these signals uh, and just telling me to never forget or just uh, being a pleasant reminder of why I love this place so much and how much I will miss it when I'm gone. So um, in that way, Perfect Days is a very, very special film. And uh, I'm, I am marveling just how, as I say, how, how special it has become for me over a relatively short amount of time, and just uh, over the course of just a few months. This is a beautiful work of art, and so I want to uh, urge you, uh, for anyone who has not yet seen this, this. Uh, amazing film uh, to please check it out uh, there are a, a number of great performances here and for those who may know Japanese uh, entertainment Japanese uh, music and also Japanese cinema I know that you will recognize uh, a number of familiar faces and those who know uh, 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 dance, uh, modern dance and ballet and music, you will also recognize a number of uh, key figures here uh, as, so, as well. So it has so many treats uh, uh, and the like. But let me just uh, just add a couple more things here before I move on to the next topic, which is, uh, first I must say uh, that uh, Koji Yaksho, Yaksho Koji, the uh, main, who plays the main protagonist, his performance is, this is, um, uh, this is perhaps my favorite performance by Koji Yaksho that I have ever seen. You know, I haven't seen all of his films, but I've seen a, a good number of his films. And I am a great admirer of Koji Yaksho's work as an actor. Very powerful, very, uh, very uh, uh, larger than life. Quiet yet explosive. Uh, some of the highlights, for instance, uh, Cure, uh, which is another Criterion collection released by a filmmaker named Kiyoshi Kurosawa from uh, the late 90s, comes to mind as a, maybe an example Criterion related as well. Uh, but what Koji Yaksho does here. Uh, and I'll try to be as vague as possible. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going way, way over. I apologize. But um, what he does here is something really special, I think. And I, 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 um, I just want to highlight this. You know, Koji Yaksho has this great gift and ability and a great knack of, in particular, portraying characters in other films where he is under a lot of emotional stress. And he is able to cloak it and hide it and mask it under the veneer of what one might call Japan, quote unquote, Japanese social acceptability, end quote. But sometimes the emotional burden uh, is unleashed in unexpected ways. Uh, and I think Koji Yaksho does that so remarkably, the idea of capturing on the one hand the veneer of the quote-unquote calm of, of Japanese-ness, end quote, but then also revealing underneath the surface can be this uh, tempest of emotions that can sway one's heart one way or another. I mean, this is, I think, the gift, one of the many gifts of Koji Yaksho's performance. He's a, truly a, uh, a stellar actor in that regard, and many other regards as well. But one can say that his the emotional burden of his characters is, is, is oftentimes great. And what that signifies, therefore, is this idea of not being complacent and not being accepting of his particular station in life at that given moment in time. In other words, he, he wants to have something other than what he is at a given moment. That gives rise to the tempest of his soul uh, in, any, in a given performance. Uh, and he does this so well. 
But what he does here in Perfect Days, I would say, is this interesting variation on that theme, which is, and I'm going to try to tread carefully here, but what he does is he seems to be able to express the burden, the emotional burden of things that have happened to his past, whatever they might be. And yet there's a sense of not necessarily being at odds with that burden, but rather coming to terms with that burden, and not just coming to terms with the burden in a way that is just a complacent and carefree 100% to the point of almost a kind of um, a complacent uh, emotional sterility. No, no, far from it, but rather being uh, coming to terms with this emotional burden and accepting it for all of its pain. He accepts the pain. And he tends to, he's able to not just internalize it, but, but carry it with him. Not hide it, but show it, but let it be who he is. And so in that way, rather than collapsing under the weight of some kind of pressure that uh, releases uh, these outbursts of the tempest within, uh, his performance here is a kind of acceptance of the burden. How no matter what kind of pain that that might lead to, no matter what kind of of emotional outbursts that might lead to, there is still this acceptance of the, the emotional burden. which, uh, And he's able to capture that in a way that is not condescending to his character. He's able to capture it in a way that is very believable, very understandable, and also very, very um, revealing, and very subtle as well. And it is therefore... For that reason, or many other reasons as well, but that reason primarily, uh, that I would say that this uh, is uh, this could be very much my favorite performance of Yaksho Koji in a career of really stellar, brilliant performances. Um, Shall We Dance uh, is another one that comes to mind as well, which was mentioned a little bit too uh, in some of the supplements. So. Um, uh, but this, I think, is my favorite um, of Koji Yaksho. And I must also uh, maybe end here to Vim Vendors. Vim Vendors has done something which is, uh, you know, um, really quite quite a remarkable remarkable thing. Uh, he is able to, and he acknowledges this in one of the supplements, which is he's able to look at this film or look at the society. Uh, from a kind of insider perspective, but also from an outsider perspective. And uh, I think in that way, he creates this medium of, of being close enough, yet also being far enough, so as to uh, give a sense of distance, uh, which respects the space of the characters on the one hand, but also be close enough to uh, be a guide, uh, be an intimate guide into the, the inner workings of, uh, of what's going on. So that gives us an interesting almost parallel. You know, Vim Vendors, he describes his positioning in this way, which is very much like how we as viewers know but don't know uh, what the characters are feeling at a given moment. I think that is absolutely sublime. It is absolutely beautiful. And, and you know, I'm not a I'm not a sociologist, and I'm not a, an expert in Japanese cinema, or any cinema for that matter, so I can't make any claims as to, uh, you, know, you know, in terms of, of uh, what, the, uh, what, the, what the ratio is uh, between, you know, the status of Vim Benders as a filmmaker from Europe who's here and who is in Japan making a film versus how a similarly situated film would have been uh, created by say a a Japanese filmmaker uh, who is from the area so I I'm I'm in no way positioned uh, able to make that kind of of uh, um, theoretical analysis let alone uh, reach any kind of conclusion I don't think it, that's the point though but um, uh, uh, what I do want to say is that there is this a uh, way in which Wim Wenders and his self-acknowledged, uh, say, um, a view of, of Japan uh, from someone who is not from there originally, uh, but he is able to acknowledge things that he understands and doesn't understand, uh, and he's able to observe and also engage, uh, either from a distance or up close. And there is this uh, line that is always preserved, this almost invisible line uh, that I think... Uh, I again, I am, I am, I am uh, astonished by the the level of depth 
that uh, I mean, uh, this film registers so many, so many uh, authentic notes for me. You know, again, I'm not an expert when it comes to all things Japanese, but uh, everything that I see in this film, I feel like this is this is right out of the the daily lived-in experience of of uh, of, of Tokyo living. Uh, from a certain perspective. So uh, it is a brilliant achievement uh, from Vim Benders and company, a truly, truly brilliant achievement, uh, which is Perfect Days. And so I, I cannot say enough how much I am uh, in awe of this film. Uh, I've had this now, this release now for a, a couple months now, and I've seen this film so many times. Yeah, I think uh, I've lost count. But uh, it is, I'm, I, I, it goes by so quickly. And uh, I feel joy. I feel pain. I feel, I, 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 when I finish, I, I'm, I want to go back to Tokyo. And I want to go back to Japan. Or I just want to just uh, sit alone in a room and just maybe read a book. Or maybe listen to some music. Or maybe think back on, on some memory that I have. That's uh, far and distant from where I'm now, or maybe uh, very, very much closer to home than I might realize, or maybe it makes me want to uh, go and uh, spend that extra five minutes uh, at the dinner table, uh, uh, you know, with my family uh, that I maybe otherwise wouldn't have, uh, other, you know, uh, unless I had that feeling. You know, it's those sorts of things. So, so distant and close. Uh, those uh, feelings that I have, and again, it's not because of anything, any kind of specific connection with the specific plot details of the film per se. But it's things that the plot and my interaction with the plot make me think about, and it encourages me. It encourages me, encourages me, and welcomes me to think about uh, going forward long after the film ends. Yeah, um, I like this film. Uh, no, cross that. I love this film. Uh, cross that. Uh, I, this uh, is turning out to be perhaps one of the most uh, uh, important uh, discoveries in my own recent cinema journey. Let me put it that way. It it and it might very well be, um, in many ways, the most. Uh, the most important of such uh, recent uh, discoveries in my cinema journey. It is that immense for me. Um, and I cannot thank enough those who reached out to me, the, my dear friends here at YouTube who recommended this film before I even uh, was able to watch it. You, people were saying, saying, to, saying to me, Daisuke, you got to go check out Perfect Days as soon as you can. Well, you were right, my dear friends. You were right. Uh, because not only is this a beautiful film, this is uh, one of the most um, uh, important uh, films that I've seen for me personally in the most recent in my, in my recent days. Uh, you know, because it sets off so many things in me that um, you know very few other films are able to do. So. Um, Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, be reminded of uh, certain things that perhaps uh, I took for granted. And uh, not to say that I'm, I'm, I'm now a perfect person. I'm not. I'm far from being perfect. My days aren't perfect. Uh, but uh, maybe it's watching films like this that will uh, maybe help me or remind me to uh, appreciate things a little bit more. Uh, and even when I forget uh, to appreciate things to its fullest, I always try to come back to this film, and, and hopefully this film will still be around in terms of my own cinema journey, uh, so that it can be a, uh, that uh, continuing reminder, that warm, lovely, welcoming reminder of that which I must continue to, or, uh, or that which I welcome uh, in terms of uh, uh, keeping my eyes open and uh, just uh, being accepting uh, to the extent I'm able. I might not be as successful uh, as uh, the characters that we meet in this film, but uh, it's certainly a lovely reminder indeed. And in that way, I could say that this is probably one of the most, if not the most important uh, film, uh, recent film watch that I have uh, encountered in my cinema journey, uh, in my recent cinema journey. So that is my two cents on this film, which is Perfect Days.
The Criterion Collection has released this film, Perfect Days, courtesy of this 4K UHD and Blu-ray combo set. So we have two discs. One is, of course, the 4K UHD disc, which is what I have in the player at the moment. And the other is the Blu-ray disc. And we'll talk about the Blu-ray disc uh, a little bit later in this uh, discussion. It says on the back of the case here, it says uh, 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo edition. Uh, color 5.1 surround in Japanese with English subtitles 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio and it also says 4k digital master approved by director Vin Vendors with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack and we have the 4k uh, disc uh, presented in HDR and the blu-ray uh, as well uh, is also included so uh, there we have the uh, specifications I've also removed the insert uh, which is a fold-out insert we'll talk a little bit about the fold-out insert uh, when we get to some of the other aspects of this uh, physical media release later on in this video discussion but let me just say that uh, just in case you're interested there isn't any note or any discussion or any description in the fold out insert with respect to the uh, the actual um, uh, presentation uh, and the, the materials upon which this uh, release is being made and uh, because usually criterion releases does do have information about that you know the the uh, the restoration details and who's responsible for the restoration details etc um, you know, my uh, my reasonable well, I guess, I mean, my assumption, which I, I hope is reasonable, is that it's uh, th such details aren't included for this release of Perfect Days because Perfect Days, being a 2023 film, or perhaps uh, those considerations of restoration from uh, previous film materials, etc., isn't a consideration when talking about how this is being presented for purposes of this Criterion Collection release, which is made quite soon after. Uh, the 2023 initial release so that's uh, that's my uh, my understanding about that but I should say just uh, to round out this particular discussion about the presentation itself I should say that uh, you know in terms of the looks and sound uh, I didn't have the benefit uh, unfortunately I didn't have the benefit of seeing this in the movie theater but uh, I was very taken uh, with how this looked and sound sounds uh, whether it be on the 4k disc which is what I have in the player or the Blu-ray disc, uh, which we'll talk about momentarily. I mean, it's a film which I would say has uh, wonderful brush strokes that could be said to be uh, very painterly and having a, a feel of, um, of a kind of film texture on the one hand, but also uh, very much uh, with open arms, one can say diving into the sort of digital aesthetic and I think uh, those are captured uh, very nicely uh, in uh, the various contours that are involved so um, I'm uh, I'm very pleased uh, with uh, the way this looks and sounds courtesy of this Criterion release and so let us continue with our discussion of the Criterion Collection release of Perfect Days and now let's turn our attention to the Blu-ray disc uh, which is now what I have in the player. If uh, you notice, therefore, just uh, note here. Again, I, I apologize for my poor presentation skills. I hope you can forgive me, but the the monitor behind me does show the Blu-ray disc uh, menu uh, showing a picture or still of the main character of Hirayama with the, the logo or the title Perfect Days, which is also what we saw in the 4K UHD uh, menu when you put the disc in the player. So... Uh, those are really nice details. I mean, the, the, the central character of Hirayama I mean, is a really important character. And this look in particular uh, in the visage of uh, Koji Aksho, it's, it's uh, a really lovely image. So it's nice to have uh, the, that image adorning both uh, discs uh, menus when you put the discs in the player. But uh, we have on the left-hand side, as per customary for Criterion releases, the uh, selectable menu and again I apologize it's it's very difficult to make out but the third element here indicates supplements and so let's press that here just to give a little discussion about what we have in terms of supplements the first of the supplements that we have is titled Vim Vendors and when I press this it says in the following interview recorded by the Criterion Collection in Berlin in March 2024. Director Wim Wenders discusses the inspirations behind Perfect Days. 
And so uh, this is a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Vim vendors. It's approximately 26 minutes. It is uh, really lovely. Just as a side note, I should point out, when you watch the interview, uh, check out, Vim, among other things, Vim Vendor's glasses. They're really quite awesome. Uh, but that's not the only thing that's awesome about this. Uh, Vim Vendor's discussion now is now. Uh, he talks about so many things, so many things. Um, and he is as uh, articulate and as funny and full of wit and style and a wide ranging scope of discussion points as always. So, and among those discussion points in this great interview, we have his, say, uh, entry point into the world of cinema and Japanese cinema. And this gives him the wonderful opportunity to mention the filmmaker, the very famous Japanese filmmaker, who is named Yasujiro Ozu. And Yasujiro Ozu made a number of very, I think, uh, very uh, highly acclaimed, incredibly uh, brilliant and emotionally, uh, emotionally powerful films. Uh, one such film that is mentioned by Vim Vendors here is a film which is known in English as Tokyo Story from the early to mid-1950s. And he mentions, among other things, how he was so taken with this film, Tokyo Story, and indeed the filmography of Ozu uh, writ large, uh, that it really uh, created a, um, uh, it, it really had a sort of a, a formative uh, influence upon him. And I think not just him, but for many people of his generation and beyond. So, um, and he also talks too about his approach to Japan. And one of the interesting things about uh, the the say relationship between Vim Vendors and Yasujiro Ozu films and Japan uh, could be seen among many things. Uh, for instance, in a work that uh, Vim Vendors did, which is very much a type of of a cinematic love letter in many ways to the cinema of Ozu and to the the soul of Ozu and to the legacy of Ozu. That film by Vim Vendors is called Tokyo Ga, which is also uh, among other Ozu films is also. Uh, it could be made, uh, you could see it uh, among uh, uh, certain supplements in uh, some of the Ozu films that are uh, made available in the Criterion Collection Physical Media Catalog uh, late spring. Uh, and so uh, this is a really great, great uh, mentioning of this, uh, of this work. And it's a great, uh, say, it forms a nice through line, if you will, in terms of, of uh, Vim Vendor's uh, self-described, say, approach and feelings and viewpoints about Japan and the and the culture and society of Japan through the lens of the cinema that he was watching, as well as the uh, the uh, the prism of the films that he was making, uh, Tokyo Ga, and now film like Perfect Days. So uh, he does talk here about his impressions of uh, Japanese culture and society. Uh, this idea that he talks about in terms of the the validation and also the uh, the importance uh, uh, on a, um, a societal level of what uh, is or what could be described as the quote unquote common good, public benefit or common good, uh, and this is tied very closely with the notion of social responsibility and uh, the notion of how uh, there is a sense of of um, uh, uh, social uh, social responsibility uh, on each individual's shoulders uh, that is uh, taking the form not just of say, uh, say public works or or uh, the payment of taxes per se but in fact in acts and deeds and uh, maybe the daily uh, minutia of uh, everyday ordinary life that can accumulate into what could be called, say, uh, something that is, uh, on a societal level, the common good. And I think that's a really key concept that he ties into, which also uh, uh, links really nicely with how one can view someone like Hirayama uh, in the film Perfect Days, again, someone who does so much, uh, even that might go unnoticed uh, to the uh, to the casual, uh, say, uh, frequenter of uh, the public restroom facilities or anyone who's just frequenting the the public spaces, the parks, etc. It might go unnoticed, but uh, it is these extra moments that 
might seem on the surface to be uh, head and shoulders above any kind of of um, expectation of his work duties or the performance of his work duties. But this itself could be said to be in its own way a kind of reflection of social responsibility uh, in the context of Japanese modern Japanese society as uh, uh, maybe observed by uh, Vim Benders. So uh, this is, I think, a really important concept. Um, and also talking too about writing the script uh, and the process. Uh, again, this is written by Takuma Takasaki and Vim Benders. So this uh, w- working process. Also, uh, the, uh, the the amount of time it took to write the script. I think he mentions here three weeks, and. Also, uh, the notion of words and language. Uh, this is a film that is in Japanese, the Japanese language. So, he, so Vim Vendors does touch uh, uh, a bit about uh, the handling of uh, uh, issues and matters with regard to dialogue and language, which is also really interesting. And then also he mentions to uh, the idea of, of uh, how he describes working. Uh, how to live with less, learning how to live with less in a kind of daily routine that's maybe espousing that type of of uh, philosophy. And this is, um, uh, there is maybe a sense too of how uh, COVID uh, uh, and the pandemic, how this might have had an effect on on uh, daily routines and uh, availability of uh, everyday items and and also interactions with others and then maybe learning to or trying to cope with uh, living with uh, things that are not as accessible or learning to live with uh, without certain things because of the relative lack of accessibility uh, due to the onset of something like the pandemic, etc. And so how that then maybe forms a, a type of framework, if you will, uh, for the potential of learning to live without less or learning to uh, have a change in one's lifestyle um, uh, that might result in maybe having uh, less material goods around one uh, as a, uh, one way of, of handling this type of, of world crisis in a manner of speaking. And again, this is dealt with in a very, I think, uh, or discussed in a very general manner. Uh, but it is also one way to to maybe uh, guide or have inventors guide us to uh, a, an understanding or interpretation of this film. Again, uh, in the context of, you know, uh, circa 2019, 2020, 2021, and then we have the outgrowth or the output of that uh, being a story, again, from 2022, 2023, perfect days. It, it, it lines up, I think, really uh, really interestingly in that regard. Um, and he also talks too about the concept of uh, uh, what is known as komorebi um, in Japanese. Uh, this, uh, and I, my explanation is not so good, but the idea, this idea of, of uh, uh, light and shimmering light and uh, the way it seems to reflect through or or uh, uh, beyond or uh, dazzle uh, off of or through, say, the flickering nature of, of trees and branches and leaves, etc. It has that kind of delicacy, almost lattice-like aspect to it that is also uh, very much a visual motif in Perfect Days as well as a kind of uh, a means by which uh, contemplation can also occur. And that's true for the viewers as well as for the people who are in the world of the film. Uh, and uh, two, talking about uh, the very key musical choices that uh, were made, as I mentioned earlier, uh, music and songs are very, very important to the lives of uh, the people in Perfect Days, specifically Hirayama, but also other people, and also Vim Vendors, and also us as well, by extension. So. Um, really, uh, really lovely comments here. And then, too, uh, speaking of Hira- Hirayama, talking about Koji Yakusho, um and uh, the the really towering performance, and uh, mentioning other great films by Koji Yakusho or, or featuring Koji Yakusho. I mentioned one earlier as well. Shall we dance? Uh, Shall we dance? Which is one of my favorite. Uh, of uh, Koji Yakusho's uh, film performances. I love that film, by the way. I think that's uh, really lovely. Uh, such a powerful and charming work. Um, and it could be said there is a, um, there could be a, a, a kind of connection, maybe spiritual connection between the character that uh, uh, Koji Yakusho plays in Shall We Dance from uh, a number of years back to 
the character that he plays now in a film like Perfect Day. So uh, it's an interesting mention. So in any event, this is the interview with Vim Benders. This is approximately 26 minutes. It is very worth it. So please check it out if you can. Um, then we have Koji Yaksho. Speaking of Koji Yaksho, the next supplement is Koji Yaksho. And it says, in the following interview recorded in Tokyo in 2023, Actor Koji Yaksho direct, uh, discusses the process of helping to create his character of Hirayama. This is very, very cool as well. Uh, this is approximately 14 minutes. Um, Koji Yaksho, uh, the actor Koji Yaksho, is so cool. He is so cool, so mannered and calm. Such a lovely, modest demeanor about him. He's so modest and he's so soft spoken uh, uh, and very articulate. Uh, it's so great to hear him speak. Uh, and he has a very humble nature. It, it's lovely, absolutely lovely. Um, so, uh, and he mentions uh, again, he's played many characters throughout his illustrious and well-celebrated career, uh, but uh, Hirayama being one of many characters that he has portrayed. And according to Koji Yaksho, he mentions how uh, Hirayama and he uh, are not at all alike. That's what he says. Um, but uh, he therefore uh, wanted to try to discover who Hirayama is uh, in terms of intuition, in terms of maybe uh, uh, inflection, voice, speaking, uh, and try to get a sense perhaps of knowing a little bit more about Hirayama. Again, as we as viewers, as we might watch Perfect Days, might too begin to question and ponder and be curious about who is Hirayama, who is this uh, very, a very, um, uh, you know, a captivating, a quite attractive figure. Who is this uh, person at the center of this film that we know so much about and yet know very little about at the same time? Well, I think that kind of approach is being espoused by the actor Koji Yaksho in terms of his preparation for the performance that he built, which is, as I say, a towering one. Um, and uh, there's also this uh, way in which he acknowledges the known and the unknown regarding the building of the character of Hirayama and I, I really admire that and I, I, I think that the uh, among the great points of success in this film at least for me in terms of watching it among the great points of success is that how this film is so successful and so skillful at uh, balancing between uh, that which is known and that which is not known and uh, just uh, uh, skirting around that just uh, skillfully enough, just well enough, uh, so well enough indeed, so that to give us enough information or to show us enough information on the one hand, but yet at the same time uh, leave much room for uh, maybe uh, 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 having us wonder who this, uh, this again, this person is, but Perhaps that uh, not knowing is itself an answer in terms of how we can ultimately begin to or 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 further know uh, Hirayama as a person. So the fact that we don't know means, in a very wonderfully paradoxical way, maybe we know uh, so much more about him. So, uh, and I think the approach by Koji Yaksho and his comments here, I think, uh, point to that very cleverly. So, and he also talks to about. Um, uh, kosei, uh, the, the word in Japanese is kosei, uh, which is uh, can be d uh, translated into English as uniqueness, individuality, uniqueness, uh, which is also a very important trait. He also mentions other filmmakers too. I love how he mentions Ozu, that uh, was also referred to by Vim Benders in the earlier uh, interview. He also mentions the uh, filmmaker uh, uh, Sadao Yamanaka, which is also a really lovely uh, reference. So. Uh, that's great. And also, uh, this is a, a lovely detail. I, I think this is so awesome how he speaks about the audience, uh, the members of the audience, the people who watch the film. He talks of, of he describes him as ogyaksan, or the, um, the customer, uh, the, uh, the customer for his, so he's very uh, respectful of the people who watch the films. Uh, that uh, perfect days and others. So he m refers to them as, in, in a sort of honorific form, as ogyaksan, which is uh, a really, uh, sh uh, real, uh, respectful, uh, lovely sign of respect on his part. And 
So it's a great, it's really great interview with Koji Yakusho. So please check this out if you can. This is approximately 14 minutes. It's really fantastic. And then we have Koji Yanai. And uh, the following interview with producer Koji Yanai, founder of the Tokyo Toilet Project, was recorded in Tokyo in 2023. So this is another interview, Koji Yanai uh, being a producer um, or uh, yes, it's a producer, and uh, it's great to hear his comments, a one-on-one -on -one interview, approximately nine minutes. And the Tokyo Toilet Project is uh, an interesting, a really relevant uh, background detail, which, as he describes it, uh, one uh, begins to further acknowledge and understand how uh, this project has a lot to do with, uh, say, um, uh, environmental betterment, uh, and also uh, this idea of social responsibility, the public good, the public welfare that was referred to by uh, Vim Benders in, uh, in the earlier interview. And of course also how it relates to uh, some specific subject matter of the film itself, Perfect Days, uh, and the, the occupation of our main character here. And also too, the, the tenor and the character, that's something I, I've neglected to mention earlier, but uh, this uh, interview with uh, the producer Yanai reminds me. Uh, one of the lovely things too about Tokyo is the wonderful uniqueness of the, uh, the architecture and the style. And you get a sense of this in the many different styles of the public toilets that you see on display in this film. Uh, each has its, its own character uh, and its own design. Uh, some being very ultra new and modern and others being quite quote-unquote traditional in the in sort of public park setting of Tokyo. And, and then we also have the way in which it's integrated into the park uh, itself and also the surrounding architecture of the, of the neighboring areas, etc. It's a fascinating look into uh, architectural styles. Uh, in uh, in Tokyo, and indeed, it reminds me to again a uh, number of things. It reminds me of um, I was in a uh, I, I was in Japan uh, again uh, earlier this year in the in the summer, and I was I had to use the the public restroom, so I I went into a restroom in. Uh, in a, a, a train station, uh, which is called Shimokitazawa, and or just outside of the entrance into the train station, and and there it was near the McDonald's, and also near a, a, a 7-Eleven uh, outside there, and also a stretch of uh, of restaurants in the Shimokitazawa train station area. But you go into that restroom and you see a sign in. Um, uh, by the sinks and also by some of the uh, just outside posted above uh, maybe the stalls or on the, the cubicle doors or whatever it uh, it's talking about cleanliness uh, let's keep the Tokyo toilets clean etc and it's done in this almost uh, funny uh, anime style or manga style excuse me so uh, this is a, a the character of uh, architecture uh, shines through, and so there is a sense of of pride. There's also a sense of creativity, uh, and also uh, it becomes its own unique world. And so uh, that uh, that kind of culture or subculture aesthetic, I think, uh, commands a sense of respect, and you really get a feel for that uh, when you hear Koji and I speak here. And then also uh, the way in which it it translates over into uh, what ends up being the story of Perfect Days. So. Um, and also he speaks to about self-reflection, uh, Koji Anaida, self-reflection, which I think is so, it's, it's a lovely parallel too, because he talks about how watching the film enables him to self-reflect, uh, uh, not necessarily because of everything, not necessarily because the film is a direct 100% representation of his own life, and he doesn't say that at all, but rather it is an opportunity for him to reflect on his own, say, memories and his own life uh, going forward. And so... And also looking back, and that's exactly how I feel when I think about this film, Perfect Days. You know, it's not, uh, I don't claim it to be 100% uh, uh, beat by beat, say, representation of my own life. But it's uh, through the watching the film, I'm able to then reflect upon, on, upon things in my own way. Uh, and that has, that is uh, a really... That's really wonderful. So it, it affects, uh, this film affects him in a manner that's uh, similar to the way it affects me. So uh, I'm very honored uh, to, uh, to be 
uh, to have a similar type of feeling as that of uh, the, the producer here. Uh, but anyway, uh, nine minutes uh, for this interview. It is fantastic, so please check this out as well. Then we have Somebody Comes Into the Light. Now, this is very, very cool. Now, this is directed by Vim Benders. This 2023 short film features actor, choreographer, and dancer Min Tanaka. So we have two choices here. We have the introduction by Vim Benders, which is approximately four minutes. And then we have the short work as well, which is approximately nine minutes. And um, Min Tanaka is one of the uh, actors who is featured in this film, Perfect Days. It is, relatively speaking, maybe a, a, a very, relatively speaking, not so long running time uh, in the grand scheme of the film, but it is such a crucial, crucial role. And um, th that point is raised by uh, Vim Benders in the introduction, which is so great. Uh, and also you can get a sense of it in terms of how the character that's portrayed by Min Tanaka interacts with the world and specifically with us and with Hirayama it is such a a poignant part of this film uh, and uh, we also understand uh, or we can become introduced to this uh, for those who are uh, being uh, introduced to the uh, to the the life and legacy and the work of Mintanaka for the first time uh, you will get uh, to know uh, and understand that uh, Min Tanaka is very famous in the dance world and sort of a, a performance dance artist. Uh, and so um, Vim Benders is very excited to work with Min Tanaka. And so in terms of shooting uh, and some of the, 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 uh, um, uh, the uh, production and making of the film uh, or making Perfect Days, uh, there was the opportunity to create a short film that was focusing in on the performance aspect and the the... Uh, the great artistry that is Min Tanaka. So we have thus the film, uh, Somebody Comes Into the Light. And it's also related to how, how light uh, and uh, nature are uh, interrelated uh, within the spaces of people in the film Perfect Days and also um, uh, in the work writ large and the environment and how that's also captured um, in uh, this short film, Komo Rebi. Uh, so it has a wonderful almost almost uh, kind of sequel like quality to it i know it's not it's not a sequel in the strict traditional sense of the word but um maybe it's spiritually connected so uh somebody comes into the light this is fantastic so you had to you have to check it out if you can it's really wonderful uh and then we have the trailer the trailer that rounds out the great um supplements here so I think all in all, it's, it's a really healthy batch of supplements. Of course, I would have personally loved to have seen more. Of course, of course, the more the merrier, as the saying goes. It would have been great, for instance, to see or to hear a commentary track or two or three uh, where one can, uh, can, can get it. But uh, we don't get that here. Uh, but that doesn't take away uh, anything that is the greatness of what we already get. So... Would I have loved to have seen more? Of course I would. Of course I would. But uh, that doesn't mean that I dislike anything that we're to get because I really do like uh, what we have here. And uh, so, uh, you have the soft-spoken nature of the, the players and the people that are involved. You have the, the great Vim Benders as well and his cool glasses to boot. It's just everything about it. It's great. So uh, please check these supplements out if you can. They are really remarkable. And just to round out a conversation here, uh, I have the uh, fold-out leaflet, which is a fold-out. It's not a staple booklet, and so let me say it again. I would have loved to have seen a staple booklet. It is more robust. It has more page opportunities on the like. So uh, it's a shame that this isn't a staple booklet, but oh well, c'est la vie. Uh, you can't win them all, uh, but uh, this isn't a complete loser. Uh, because uh, we have, among other things, uh, great still shots. Uh, I, uh, uh, remind, you know, I will uh, draw your attention once again to what we saw in terms of the uh, the uh, uh, the Blu-ray or the 4K UHD disc menus uh, with the shot of Hirayama. It's a wonderful shot. It's uh, you have another uh, close-up here of Hirayama. Um, the great visage of Koji Yaksho and that lovely smile and some aspects of the decor and environment which is also very important uh, and also uh, the um, 
uh, the another shot here. And also on this side, we have the essay, which is a wonderful essay. I learned so much from this. This is Where the Light Comes Through by Bilga Abiri. Uh, that title is also... Uh, very apropos in terms of uh, the light shining through the leaves and the nature and Komorebi, etc. Uh, and uh, the detail that is captured here in Abiri's, Abiri Abiri's essay is, uh, it's uh, quite, a, it's, it's uh, a really f uh, fascinating uh, and well-written essay, uh, astonishing. Uh, and I love, again, uh, the uh, the ease of entry uh, by which uh, this essay is written. It is, I think, well thought out, well organized. I learned so much. I read this essay a number of times uh, since I was able to get this release, uh, this criterion list. I've read this essay all the way through, and each time I, I pick up something new. Uh, it's wonderful. I wish it could have been longer. Uh, it's, it's really great, but where the light comes through, uh, you've got to check it out. It's really wonderful. And also, just I'm so sorry I should have mentioned, but we have the uh, the disc itself or the plastic case. It's in this uh, double disc type of thing here. Um, we have the two discs. This is the 4K disc, which has one kind of uh, picture motif there, uh, and then we have the the Blu-ray disc, which has a kind of grayer motif, which I, I like too. Among other things, it is very mirroring of what I was trying to describe earlier in terms of how this film and the, the, the photography captures both a kind of filmic quality language, but also a digital film, a digital uh, camera quality language as well, which is so great. And you, you can kind of see that reflected in uh, the picture that's used for this disc versus the picture that's used for this disc. It's really nice. And also, I should say too, uh, the lovely uh, background decor of what we have in the the uh, the inner sleeve uh, and uh, the back here and then the front uh, perfect days look at that look at that shot uh, that's uh, wonderful and I should mention here yes the um, uh, the art uh, it's uh, uh, excuse me here. Uh, the production credits. Uh, it's art is art director Eric Skillman, designer Michael Boland, and art art, art production coordinator William Breeze. Uh, print production artist Craig Phillips and art assistant Julie Sussman. Uh, and so, let me now put this back in the in the plastic casing like so. There we are. And there you have uh, a few comments. Uh, a few comments about this uh, this astonishing film, which is Perfect Days. As as I mentioned, I've seen this film so many times now, uh, so many times. Uh, in this short span of of weeks and months, uh, it has really uh, sort of catapulted uh, itself into sort of my consciousness, my cinema consciousness, in a manner of speaking. Uh, I cannot uh, express enough just how much I am taken with this film and, uh, and how much I really feel it allows me uh, a, a, a personal, a highly personal, uh, a deeply personal uh, look into, among other things, why I love Japan and also maybe an opportunity for me to start looking back uh, if I haven't done so already, uh, in terms of my own, say, advancement in years and age, and things uh, that I'm looking forward to, but also things that I'm beginning to look back upon. Uh, and so uh, this film really enables me to, among other things, uh, uh, say uh, or express certain feelings that I have about my life and maybe Japan and my feelings about Tokyo uh, that perhaps... Uh, elude me or that escape me when I try to express them in words uh, but this film allows me to to uh, settle with my thoughts and my feelings uh, even when they're at their most jumbled up I can sit down with this film and I, I, I get a sense of peace in that way so uh, that's why I mentioned how this film I regard as being one of the most important uh, discoveries in my recent cinema journey I am uh, very grateful that I was able to discover this uh, when I have, and um, uh, it, it means a lot, uh, this film to me. So uh, this is the work which is Perfect Days.
All right, my dear friends, uh, thank you very much. And again, I apologize for my poor presentation and my my uh, my, my uh, messy messy background round and room, etc. I'm still trying to get settled in, trying to rearrange things. So I apologize for for uh, for anything that might be offending your eye and your your aesthetic sensibilities. Uh, I hope you can forgive me. And also, I apologize for my meandering way, as always, of speaking. Uh, about uh, films uh, like this, uh, but I can't control myself. Uh, uh, it's like the the f with the frog and the scorpion. I can't help it. It's in my nature. Uh, so I hope you can understand. Uh, but it's just my way of trying to again express just how much I really, really love this film. And uh, I hope that you are able to watch it if you haven't done so already. But if you have seen it. Then I hope you get to watch it again because uh, it's a release like this by Criterion, which makes it uh, totally worthwhile and then some. So uh, check it out if you haven't done so already, and check it out if you have done so already. So uh, check it out in any case. Uh, but in any event, thank you so much for your time and patience and, and wonderful courtesy and friendship, my dear friends. Uh, and uh, please let me know what you think about this film in the comment section below. Uh, if you like it, if you don't like it, if you love it, if you hate it, if you really hate it, uh, you know your opinions are very important to me, and everything is fair. So uh, you let me know how you feel. Because uh, that is also very, very important uh, and uh, very much uh, part of why I continue to do this is to uh, learn from you and learn from your wonderful, keen insights and observations about uh, films like Perfect Days, about other films in the Criterion Collection and elsewhere. So uh, please uh, let me know what you think. As always, I am very, very interested to know what it is you have to say. Uh, and so with that, my dear friends, that's it. So thank you very much. Uh, and until the next video, please continue to be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, 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 great movies like Perfect Days, like uh, other films by Vim Benders, like other films in the Criterion Collection and beyond, beyond, beyond. So until the next one, my dear, dear, dear friends, stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.